Joining us now in a CNBC exclusive is Mike Arrighetti. He's the president and CEO of Aries. Good to have you. And have it's you good to be here. Uh, you. After the quarter as well. $17 billion. I mean, can that kind of money continue to flow in? Obviously, it's the engine for so much of the fees that then are the profits that you see. Yeah, look, we, we, we've been out with guidance that says that the company expects to achieve $500 billion by the end of 2025 and also articulated coming into this year, just given the setup for some of our large flagship funds that we expected a very strong fundraising year. So not surprisingly, seeing 30 billion in the first six months is in line with expectation. There is this sense that things are going to get overheated in your market, in terms of private credit in particular. And, and a question as to whether underwriting standards will decline as everybody competes, because uh, there's a lot of money, obviously, chasing this market. How do you respond to those who yeah, worry I think, about that? I, th I, I think it's a little bit of a false narrative, to be honest. I think you have to think about private credit uh, in terms of other markets. So if you look at the private credit market, it's grown about 15 percent per year for the last 10 years. That's squarely in line with the growth in the private equity market. It's squarely in line with the growth in the loan and high yield market. It's a little bit faster growth than the public markets, but, but pretty much in line. So I think part of what's happening is it's a fairly new asset class for people. And so they're learning about it. And so the, the, the speed with which it's growing to, to some is shocking. But if you zoom out and contextualize it in terms of the growth of the economy and the markets that surround it, it, it's, it makes a ton of sense. Well, then how do you, you know, I'm always curious. There's a race to underwrite, a race to deploy capital to some extent. How do you differentiate your underwriting standards from your competitors? Well, I think you have to, a lot of the business that people are paying attention to, which is only a fraction of the global private credit market, is supporting private equity. And if you look at it through that lens, there's about $2 trillion of private equity dry powder in the market. There's about $300 billion of private credit dry powder. So order of magnitude, when someone buys a company with leveraged credit, they're going to borrow $2 for every dollar of equity. And right now, even with the, the rapid pace of fundraising in private credit, private credit dry powder is about 30% max of, of available PE. So there's still a supply demand imbalance. In terms of Aries, we were one of the first into this market. Uh, we've obviously been a market leader, and we differentiate on scale. We differentiate on flexibility. Uh, we differentiate uh, in terms of the number of people, the geographic footprint. So there's a lot of things that go into it. But interestingly, 70% of the credit that we extended this quarter was into the existing portfolio. So that's actually one of the ways that we differentiate in slow markets. Right. I mean, slow markets being obviously there aren't that many leveraged Correct. buyouts to fund. What are your expectations there? I'm curious as to what you're seeing or hearing from the sponsors in terms of the remainder of this year and whether things may pick up. I think people have been waiting to get to the end of the hiking cycle. And now that we're getting there, we're starting to see the pipeline build. So transaction activity in terms of deals logged across our platform was up 20 percent Q2 versus Q1 and we're seeing that shadow pipeline build. So I think as we get into Q3, Q4, the markets will thaw. A lot of the sell side bankers that we talked to are seeing the same thing. Uh, we heard Steve Leisman talking sort of broadly about macro. I mean, you've made the case, of course, that you know, the returns that you can get right now in terms of potentially double digit on a yep. relatively short term basis, making an extremely strong asset class. How long do you see that continuing for? It's quite attractive. Obviously, we're generating 12 to 15 percent rates of return on pretty plain vanilla credit assets. I think are that's they really plain vanilla. They like, I mean, it seems, vanilla. seems hard to imagine you can get 12 to 15 percent on something well, you call plain vanilla. Well, half of that is base rate and a big chunk of that is fee. So if you just look at spreads, spreads have been fairly consistent. It's really just the benefit of the underlying. So part of the reason people are so attracted to private credit right now is because you're capturing that short duration front end of the curve floating rate. So it's been a big outperformer. But if you look at the performance of the asset class over time, it's been a consistent performer because it has a pretty durable excess spread, excess return relative to other instruments. So I also think there's a view that as rates come back down, you'll see a softening in demand for private credit. I don't expect that. I think that people have now come to appreciate the durability of that premium that we're able to generate. 